install in 20 times today, we finally are able to get back on. All right. So just give me one sec. Let me go ahead and get in the chat so I can answer any questions if y'all have them. And then we'll go from there. So the first thing that I was going over first is you want to kind of build off of the run and kind of see what tendencies your opponent has. So like if you're going to run the ball, obviously you want to make sure your point receiver is either the tight end or the fullback. So you'll start off pretty much either going in your big package or your dual tight end package. Um, the first play we're going to go over is the halfback base, like I was trying to do earlier. Just go up against random plays. Um, a lot of what I like to do in Gun Bunch is I want everything a little bit compressed and tight as possible. Um, your throw accuracy and throw power are more in tune with the distance from the quarterback and not the distance of the field. Um, if you think about it, the field is like... 25 yards this way, 25 yards this way, give or take, you know, it's, you know, it's going to be medium throw accuracy to throw it from the center field all the way to the sidelines. You want to try to make sure everything is as close as possible so that you can benefit in terms of accuracy instead of throwing it from one side of the field to the other side where you start throwing like air passes. So, uh, again, like I said, you want to go ahead and motion the receiver in. And then what I like to do is, whichever way you're running this, you want to make sure your impact block is on the guard, okay? Not the, not the tackle, not the center, the guard, okay? So all you're going to do is you're going to flip the stick up. In a game, you'll see a helmet icon with a voice interaction uh, under his name once you've done that. Um, and basically, that means he'll be engaged with whoever's you know, in the path or whatever, he'll be more aggressive on his blocking, which is definitely going to help open some run lanes. So we're going to go ahead and run the play, and as you can see, we can get some solid space off just doing that one adjustment. Um, like I said, same thing, you're just going to keep doing that with the impact block on it. And then just keep running, read your, read your run fits, and then just cut up when you can. You don't, necess don't want to run it necessarily like a sweep to the outside. You just want to get around that tackle or that guard. Find, find whichever hole you can get through, and then make it happen. So do it again. As you can see right there, hit a solid run. Now, once you build off of this, you need to be able to execute the next play in this scheme, which is going to be your play action, PA post, okay? So you want to give the cell because, like I said, they can see when you, you know, cycle through your line. And usually people, you know, an advanced person will see that and they'll start run committing, which is the weakness for impact blocking, okay? So uh, when you see them, you know, heavy on the commits, what you can do is you can go ahead and start off in the run play give the impact block, and then audible to the play action play. Now you know you got them in a run commit. And uh, pretty much what I like to do in this specific formation is I run a curl route right there, and that's the only thing you're gonna need to do. Okay, so we got all levels of the field covered, everything spaced off in their own respectful positions. You got the corner post, which is ultimately what we wanna try to get, but do make the reads as necessary. You see how you guys split safeties. You could be, you know, cover four, you know, Jackson, that route, that corner route might not be open versus cover four. You might need to check down underneath to the flat route or the crossing route underneath. Um, other than that, you just kind of take what's open. Or read, we see the flats wide open. You see the drag coming across, it's open. Now, if you're using a tight end, he's probably not gonna get, you know, get as much separation as the um, receiver would. So it's just something that you got to kind of tune into. Like I said, just keep that thing over there. And we'll, we'll read that flat first, see the flats open. 
sometimes if you can rack it, he'll get a better position instead of just running out of bounds if you have a good rack receiver. I'll show you. Make sure you got the curl. So if I go rack, I didn't mean to throw it down, my bad fellas. I'm just trying to get the quick pass so I can show you the rack. Make sure we got the curl. So the X. So if you rack, see how he kind of catches and cuts up field. If you can get it off early enough, you'll be able to get up that sideline pretty smooth. Quarterback was a little delayed on the handoff animation right there. See when you see how that animation gets in. Might try to cancel it so that I can get it get it off faster. Let's see. Yeah, you can cancel it. So that's that's pretty much going to be your next play. You're just going to read anything. Usually, I like to look at that corner route first. Um, I kind of see if the safety's getting leverage towards it. If the safety's leveraging towards it, I'm probably going to go down with the drag route or, you know, sometimes I'm just going to look over there between the flat route and the curl route, see how he's shaded with that seam flat, okay? Um, that's going to be your second play that you're going to check to. It's pretty effective. Um, now we're going to go ahead and get into the next part of the play. Make sure you have your receivers. And you always want to kind of utilize your packages too. Like, don't just be stuck in one package for everything. Don't be stuck, you know, trying to manually sub people. As long as you cycle through your packages that in tune with the auto sub sliders that I use, you shouldn't have an issue with anything in terms of fatigue outside of your quarterback. If your quarterback starts being fatigued, that means you need to run the ball more. Don't sit there trying to throw when his color changes to yellow, red, or something like that. Because what happens is when you get those color animations, it's going to affect your throw accuracy. It's going to affect your ability to hold on to the ball. It's going to affect your ability to run for longer periods of time. So when your color color starts changing on your quarterback, you know, make sure that you know if you can't get a quarterback sub in or whatnot, make sure you utilize your run game with the first play that I showed you, okay? Um, next play that I want to go over spe specifically is going to be the dig return. So I'm just going to go random nickel here. Usually what I'm looking for if it's man coverage and they're not pressed, I'm looking for that whip route, okay? But at the same time, I want to be able to attack both sides of the field. So what I do usually, like if I'll see press, like right here, he's pressed. I know that that route by Renfro, it's not going to get off press. Anytime you have a double move on the field and they're in press coverage, you're not going to get that double move off. What's going to happen is they're going to get pressed trying to make the release and then they're going to get jammed and they're going to retry to run the route and it's going to mess the timing up when you're throwing, you might throw an interception. So just kind of keep that in mind. Usually what I see Stuff like that is I'll go ahead, I'll just run into the flat, clear out some space. Um, the next thing that I might do is I might go vertical with a running back and then block the backside tight end. I can do that. That way I got my, my vertical, I got my high low with the Renfro and the dig route, and then I got my man beater over there with Jackson if I need to worry about that. Okay, so. Usually, like I said, um, another thing that you guys might want to do here is um, you don't want your running backs running all the way down the field. So you're going to go ahead and smart route his streak so that he comes to an end point a lot, a lot faster if you're needing that much time to check to a running back. Um, it also changes the ball trajectory if you need to throw it downfield instead of me trying to throw the ball and him throwing it into coverage or versus anyone shaded over the top because that route projection is shorter that quarterback is going to throw a shorter route on the ball trajectory so it's just something that a lot of people aren't going to tell you you know and i've got enough reps in to you know basically say hey this is true trust me when i say it okay um other than that you're still going to have your read i mean you got your backfield read to check too if they don't cover to the flat fast enough you can get that halfback vertical 
You just really got to make that read, though. So we'll try it again. The motion tells what we're going to do with that route. See how he doesn't press? That means we can run the double move. And I'll just run a swing route from behind. And then I'll probably run a flat route here. And then we good. Um, another thing, just make sure that your ID, the mic, is on one of the four primary rushers. I don't necessarily uh, prefer it to be on the secondary unless you're running the ball. Um, reason why is because if if you put it on the secondary, your, your, your alignment is going to be watching the linebacker and you know you, you're not going to have double teams where they need to be okay so other than that other thing i will do is i will smart route the route by renfro when he's not pressed so that he gets into that cut a little bit faster so he can get his separation even though he's not super fast he will get open so we're just going to go ahead run it watch him on the cut and then you can low ball pass it right there now if you're worried about that dig route crossing at the same time he's cutting, you can usually just shorten that route. So we'll go ahead and do it like that. Then what I can do from right here is if, let's say I wanna block the running back, I can, I can run a drag with the tight end and go to the flat or if I want, I could create a rub route concept, force the safety D, or I can send him on a smart out route. I can do it like that. So I have my high low read to the left. And if I really want to get technical, I can add a halfback option route to kind of sit there after the drag comes across, you know. So there's just certain things that I look for. Again, like I said, if I see man coverage, I'm automatically going to that whip route by Jackson. That's that's a no-brainer. Um, anything other than that, if I'm looking at zone or something, I'm going to definitely take my read over there by Renfro, the running back, or any routes that I have going to that side of the field. So we're just gonna kinda look at it again, watch run pro, watch the drag. You have them there, you know, like I said, practice mode's not gonna do me any justice, especially from the center of the field. But uh, usually if you're running gun bunch, you're gonna be left hash, right hash anyway. But I'm just trying to give y'all the solid prime examples of stuff that you can do to kind of uh, catch people in those bad tendencies. Like I said, if you don't wanna do a swing route, you could probably just take, take the drag route, keep the whip route, and I could probably just run a curl with him instead. And what that curl would do, it'll, it'll hold the safety in case I need to buy some more time. Like, let's say I want to slide protect to the right and roll out to the right, and, and you know I need a little bit more time for that uh, double move over there by um, Renfro to get over the top. That curl route will hold that that down safety just long enough for me to bomb it over, you know, so it's just stuff that you can watch, see how we got that, look, look, look. Now, if I get a faster receiver, I could probably, uh, probably get that beat off the edge a little bit. I just wanted to show you guys, if you smart route this, run the drag, and give him the curl, that's gonna, that curl's gonna hold the safety, and also make sure that your ID is on the line, just like that, and then just watch that route by Renfro. Just watch it, and you can lowball it and make the user catch. You'll probably get better animations in a game. Practice mode on all Madden, they're, they're gonna play it a little bit tighter, but you should, for the most part, be okay. So like again, it was running the drag, run the curl under the whip. I know it's a zone coverage, so I'm not even gonna worry about the whip route. The, the reads I'm gonna make is gonna be between Waller, Jones, and Renfro. There's three reads. I don't have to worry about the other one. Got there, got there. See, if I could have rolled out and I had a faster receiver with better route running, next year I'll have Devontae, so that won't be an issue. Hopefully I'll still have this plate. Like I said, just run our jag, drag, run our curl. And then I can do some extra stuff with the running back if I need to. Like, for instance, okay. Let me give y'all another prime example. Like I could leave him outside, and then I could run a wheel route to pull that seam flat and open the drag up. You know, like you can do a lot of creative stuff with it, and then look over the back back end. Like if I get a high ball pass, you know that curl route's going to be open. Like I said, in game is going to be a lot different than what you see in practice mode. 
Um, the main thing that I'm doing in practice mode is I'm trying to get rid of the ball fast enough, but hold it long enough to where I get blocker resistance. You see how um, your higher rated linemen will have better bars for the block resistance. As you can see, that left side of my line is pretty much intact in terms of pass protection. Uh, the right side of the line, I don't, I don't have very good pass protectors. So, one sec. All right, but other than that, it's just kind of some stuff that I want to kind of uh, demonstrate to you guys. Um, other than that, is like I said, I will use this for man coverage. Primarily, I will look at Jackson. As long as they're not pressed, you can use those routes. Um, if they are pressed, you're going to have to change up a little bit what you're doing. Um, depending on the depth of the safety, sometimes I'll just run a fade route with Jackson instead of trying to run a double move whip. Okay, press you usually you can just use your speed and just get over the top of them. So that's going to be that play. Let's try to get in as many as possible before I get blue screened or whatever. Just want to kind of help you guys out. Um, trying to see another play that I like to use stock is going to be the bench pivot. Y'all probably see me bomb a lot of people in it. Um, Mainly, I use it, if I see someone in cover three, let me go ahead and tell you how we're going to run this. This is going to be more left hash, right hash based. You know, in a game, you're probably going to be on the left hash and right hash. You're not going to be in the middle of the field too often when you're running these types of formations where you're heavy on one side and short on the other. Um, like I said, there's a couple ways you can do this, okay? If they're playing match coverage, and I'll get to that in just a second. It's going to be a difference between the match coverage and then there's going to be the drop coverage first, okay? All right, so if they're running the drop, you're going to do this with the point receiver. You're going to run a fade route, not a vertical. Run a deep fade, and you're going to have to motion the receiver out. So this is going to be cover three drop. Last thing you're going to need to do is slide protect because you will need to step to the receiver to make the throw. Remember what I was telling you when I first started talking about passing from the sets is your accuracy is determined from the quarterback to the receiver, not the depth of the field, but the distance between your quarterback and receiver. So the closer you can get to him on that throw, the more accurate you will be. That way you won't have throws being pass led too far inside or outside or underthrown or overthrown or stuff like that where you're having issues. Just make sure you put your slide protect in there. And last but not least, go ahead and make sure your ID is on the line and not the secondary, unless you know for a fact they are blitzing, okay? But other than that, you're just gonna come over here, you're gonna take two steps to the right and you're just gonna throw it over the top. Now I would, Suggest that you have a speed receiver right there. Zay's not necessarily the, the guy I wanted to have right there. So I got two receivers that I could put right there for that. I'm just go back into it. It's all about packages. Put your two fastest receivers over there. And we good to go. We'll try it again. I'm going to set price a little finicky sometimes. So you'll run the fade and motion him out, slide protect, and make sure your ID is on the line. You're gonna take two steps and you should be able to sell it over there. I probably should have put a little pass lead to the right because it seems like Bosa's getting a little lead off over there and I don't like that. So I can probably make some adjustments to handle that. There we go. So you want to get a little outside pass lead on it. I'm just going to tell this guy just to check it out. Be right back, fellas.
<laughs> All right, guys, I'm back. Let me see what I was working on. Okay, like I said, um, usually what you're looking for in situations like this is really where their safety is. Now, if they're using the safety, what I usually do is I'm going to check it down. Um, usually the best things to do is probably once you motion this receiver out, once he hits that little sideline, you just wait for him to stop and you can go ahead and throw it to him. Um, it'll be a little five yard deep. Uh, that, now if they're playing hard flats, you can go ahead and hit that route by Waller. Um, if their user is aggressive, they don't want to get beat by the fade route and they're on that free safety third, you can check it to the dig. Um, if they're not blitz savvy, you can opt to do something with the running back. You could probably give him a option route out the backfield if you know they're not blitzing. And pretty much, like I said, just read it downfield. If it's not there, you know, obviously practice mode. I do not have the best right tackle. He's going to just give up. Now, if that, that becomes a problem, sometimes you might have to block the tight end, attack the deep out route where Waller was going, and then you would have to motion your running back over to the flat like this and get him with a flood concept more more like, and then just kind of see what they go go with and do it like that or something. Or you can opt to do a curl route. Let me see. Let's see, I keep that curl route. I can get the fade route, and then I can just motion the running back over here to help with the protection. And I can run it like that, and then just, I can probably low ball it to the tight end or hit the curl on the swap. Um, there's just some variations that you can do, you know, just always adjust to what could possibly hurt you in the long run. Um, other than that, let's say I could run the curl from the point, and then I can go, I could go hit trial right here, and then just run like an under dig or something like that, you know, just any way to kind of attack him, see what he does, you get him on the double dig over there, shouldn't have low ball it, but y'all, y'all kind of understand a little bit. Yeah, man, Rain, Rain doesn't want to play competition, bro. Like, I, I'm not even going to worry about it no more because it is what it is. I joined his Discord, tried to get a game with him, and he, he doesn't like to play comp. He wants to play people he knows he can beat, so I don't worry about that no more. <sighs> Got me another charger for my controller today, so that helps a little bit. Um, I think other than that, I don't run too many other plays from here like I will fuck with like the Y curl or spacing concept sometimes I'll fuck with the bunch trail or you know I might do the Z spot or the Z spot and go but other than that the, the main plays that you're going to make sure that you have is the half back base the P, PA post the bench pivot and then the last one you have your verticals we'll go over it real quick um, verticals, I do tend to do some creative stuff with. Um, usually, like I said, most of the stuff that I do in bunch is between the ISO receiver and the running back. You know, so I might run a hitch swing route concept. So if they're playing zone, I know that that swing route is going to pull any quarter flat, seam flat, any type of flat. It will pull it to the outside after it matches with the hitch route first, it'll pull to the flat opening the hitch route. Now, it's gonna be so open, if their user's so worried about everything deep, you're just gonna be able to dink and dunk, dink and dunk, dink and dunk. Eventually their user, if they're playing a safety or something, they're gonna to try to play down on it. And when they play down on it, then you got the crossing route over there by Johnson that becomes the next threat. Um, the last thing you wanna do, you can either run a hitch or a curl route. If they're playing press coverage, you can actually smart route the hitch route and they will not be able to press it, which is something not too many people will tell you about. Um, and it's very valuable to have something like that in your arsenal because bunch sets aren't very good versus press, especially if you have complex routes that you have to worry about. 
you know, they can get jammed up at the, at the line if someone knows what they're doing. Um, other than that, like I said, you're going to have simple reads on the field. I didn't, I, well, that's Renfro. Renfro makes <laughs> those catches. But uh, it's pretty simple to grasp, you know, and I'll try to use it in a game if I don't get disconnected. And like I said, you've got your two hitches on the field. You got your, your vertical spacing, one left, one right. Pretty simple. We're stretching all dimensions of the defense. Another thing is you definitely have to watch for that um, mid read. That mid read is a threat to that deep crosser. The reason why is I'm going to go ahead and shut it and show you real quick. A mid read will bump that crossing route and slow it down. Okay, see how he bumps him? You don't want that. So anytime you automatically see that 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 uh, that middle linebacker, whoever's in the middle playing that deep. You don't want to throw that, okay? Because he's going to get bumped, and it's going to slow his separation down. It's going to give you a bad throw or, or timing on your throw. So usually, like I said, you see that. Sometimes you might have to change up what you're doing a little bit. So, like, let's say I decide to go hitch, smart hitch, swing, and then I go low hitch on this side. And as we see... Pass protection isn't necessarily there with uh, Parker. I can't do nothing about that. But in a game, it's a lot different. I would have had that hitch route. Um, practice mode, I'll probably have to block the running back. I won't be able to get that because of the alignment of where Bosey is. I do try to play this against matched personnel the correct way. Uh, nickel defenses is what you're supposed to use against bunch, you know, shotgun bunch anyway. So I will try to, you know, emphasize using the correct things on the field. Um, like I might block him. Because see how wide he is? He's in a seven tech. That lineman has to kick out three positions over and beat him to the edge. And usually if you don't have a high rated lineman against that, you know, that can be problems because you're not going to be able to effectively double team him. It is rough. Usually you would have to either bring a running back to that side to block or block the tight end. You know, that's usually what you would have to do. Um, like I could probably run it with a drag, with a smart hitch route. But y'all see everything opening up over knee. Can't really sit in there in practice mode and show you too much because, like I said, the more you run stuff in practice mode, the, the tougher the defenses tend to get. But that's going to be what you're going to be doing as far as gum bunch goes. Um, the other stuff that I've been working on was wing flex close. Um, pretty much just like the other one, there's three runs in here that you're going to kind of brand yourself off of based off how your opponent plays. Actually, there's four runs. You have your zone split, dive, zone weak, and, and stretch. Okay, um, Zone split is more for people that use the, zones, the zone blitzes, right? So let's say they're trying to zone blitz me. Okay, they're going to be coming heavy from the right side. Um, what this allows me to do is it, the run goes that way, but it's like a counter zone. Okay, it's not like a counter, it's a counter zone. So it gives you the flexibility to change the direction of which way you're going. Just don't hit the turbo until you get in an open space. That's just the big thing that you have to kind of be mindful on. You find your gap and just like that. So zone splits work good versus the stock zone blitzes in game, whether they're doing a cover two or cover three, you know, anything where they're sending five guys, this is the run that you want in your arsenal, okay? So it's gonna be simple. You're gonna catch the guy that's responsible for those two gaps. You're gonna, you're gonna stress him, okay? He's not gonna be able to defend both gaps because he has to defend the gap over here by the center and the gap between Leatherwood and Parker, and then you have the option to kick it back to this other gap. So you can just make, make your read off of what opens and which gap he takes. See how he took the other gap? And you just go through it. Don't hit the turbo until you've cleared traffic, okay? Try to say that enough. Once you clear traffic, then you break that tackle, then you get your turbo, okay? So let's go over the second run. Second run is when they're more in, you know, just playing stock 
zones, right? So we'll just come out here, and let's say they're just playing stock zones. Now, if you're running this one, you need to make sure that you have your double team and your ID right there in that, that gap, okay? Because what's gonna happen is those two linemen are gonna double team on the guy you got double team, and then once you break the line of scrimmage, that center should be able to break to the second point and get the block on the guy that you ID. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and run it. See how the center pushes upfield. So if you're playing someone that plays stock drop zones, you will be using the halfback dive and you will be running it just like this, okay? Just always kind of pay attention to their recent plays on defense that you can kind of get an idea of you know, what kind of coverages they're using on, on the front seven, and it, it can help you decide which type of runs you'll be using against them, okay? So that's gonna be your dive. Now, if they're in a situation where they're weak up front, okay? If you're playing someone that doesn't want to match personnel and they refuse to do it, you're gonna run the stretch or the zone weak. Start with the zone weak. Let's say you're playing someone that wants to run nickel defense or something and they want to play anything where they're just dropped off, right? What's going to happen is all you got to do is make your count off the center. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six guys to the left and one, two, three, four, five guys to the right. I got one, two, three, four, one, two. My better blocks are going to be on the right side. So we'll run it zone to that side. And what I can do is I know they're in zone coverage when I motion and go ahead and give me a clear out right there. So now we got five, we got our blockers, and then we just same thing, just follow that block, try to get off the edge. Now you're not always gonna get a big run, but usually like you play people that use like three down linemen or something, you can definitely eat on this play. Um, another thing that you can do is you can utilize the impact block instead of double team and then run it flipped. Okay, what you're gonna do is the handoff is gonna be a little bit better when you're running it to the right and your your transition to cut it to the left is gonna be just like the zone split. It's gonna be a lot smoother though. Um, and with the impact blocking, you're definitely gonna be able to drive it upfield just like you're running a dive, dive line. So it's just something to have in your arsenal that you can do that and just trust me in the game. As long as they're not just playing flood gap defense where they just got everybody on the line, you know, then you're in trouble. You can't necessarily run those types of types of runs. All right. The last one, obviously the stretch. Usually you catch them trying to pinch in or shoot those gaps on the inside. You know, I really shouldn't have to show you running the stretch because I cannot, I cannot, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, demonstrate what a user would do on defense. It's the best, I mean, I'll do the best I can, but they're not gonna let me get those adjustments. But usually, like, if you see someone playing like a man blitz or something, um, you still gotta do your hat count. You got one, two, three. Do not count anything in front of the center, everything to the right or to the left. So you got one, two, three, four, five, and I got one, two, three, four blocking. And then the left, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, I got four blocking. So it would be a red on either side. What I could do is motion to this other side just to clear that box up a little bit. Or I could, and then just same thing, just find that gap and cut up. Don't hit turbo or don't be too aggressive on your stick. Like if you're, if you're trying to cut too hard on your stick, you're gonna have that little stutter step and you wanna not have that okay so just kind of slowly transition if you can just roll your stick slightly from the direction of the handoff till it's going up and you'll get a better animation to cut it a feel like that okay so you're almost running it like an inside zone but you get to get that clean gap that you want so i'm going to show you one more time you're going to start with the stick from the direction of the handoff. So it'll be directly from the uh, 3 o'clock position to the 12. You're going to slowly roll it so that you do not get that delayed stutter step. Okay, so we're going to 3 o'clock. I cut it too, too fast. 
But if you get a smooth transition, you get enough reps in it in practice mode, you'll definitely reap the rewards. Um, other things you can do is you can motion hike this and get that, that in, inside block by that receiver. And like I said, just tr try to get your reps in as far as um, transitioning up the field. Don't, don't be too hard on the stick and don't hit turbo until you've hit clear green, okay? So those are gonna be your runs. Let's kind of get more in depth to the, the pass plays. Um, one of the ones that I do like is this play, play, play action cross switch. Um, if I see man coverage, man, in fact, let me put man coverage on the field because I need to demonstrate. Go back into it. So let's say they're playing like a cover one or a cover two. Okay, what I like to do here is everything is based off of clearing things out. So I'll do a block release route and I'll do a hitch route. So usually whoever's defending the running back or that receiver over there, they're gonna get congested over there. It's gonna be a lot of traffic. They're gonna bump into each other. And then what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get that one-on-one -on -one with my receiver on that cut route to beat man coverage. Now I will have to roll out to the right a little bit if the pocket gets broken down, but usually you should have that cut route right across the middle of the field. Um, try to do it one more time for you fellas. Pretty simple setups. And then like I said, just make sure that your ID is on the line and not on a linebacker. That way they block better. And then you can just get a nice little pass over there to the receiver on the cut route. So if they become too savvy on playing too much man coverage, that's an easy way to attack them. Um, also, if they're like man blitzing, they're playing cover one blitzes, you can check for that check release route to get wide open, okay? It's usually a good way to, to attack those um, plus one defenses. Let me see if I can get a scenario where it works. Let me see. Usually I can get a plus one defense in. All right, so here's a plus one defense. All right, so you get that route, still have the hitch. Now we can still make that read by Renfro, but if I'm not mistaken, you watch this route by Moreau, it should get open sometimes. In a game, sometimes it will. Like if they commit to anything, it will. I don't know, maybe I gotta do it from the tight end spot, make it work. All right, so yeah, practice mode, they'll pick it up, they'll pick it up, but in a game, you know, sometimes they start running stuff like that, usually he'll just break free or get out of the backfield and be wide open. Um, that's just some stuff that I like to do out of here. Um, other route concepts that I might do, um, if they're playing zone, I'll run it different. I'll swap who's running the hitch route. Like I said, everything you're doing is going to be based off your opponent tendencies. So let's say we're playing someone and they're just, oh, let me go defense. Play tight. Random zone. So if they're going zone, what I might do with Renfro is give him the hitch route. I might smart route it or something. And then I'll do the check release route still with the tight end. And as you can see, watch that hitch route. That hitch route can become a threat if you do it right. I, I smart routed it, so I think it dropped it right into that bird hook. So let me just let him run a short hitch. Just kind of watch that hitch route. It, it can become a threat if used right. Sometimes you got to put a little magic on. But definitely in a game, users are going to be controlling that middle of the field. And the first thing they're going to see is that crossing route become an issue and they're going to try to break to the crossing route and usually that's that's one way to get that hitch route open or you could just follow through and then just check read your running back you know if you see the running back get open like that you can run that I probably should have threw it to the running back but just read them all off to off to the flat let's see 
then I'll show you the last so, so we got the hit trial, read it, read it, read it, read it. We got plenty of room for the running back off the flat because they're not playing underneath. You get those easy check downs. Those check downs in this formation is definitely going to be your bread and butter, okay? So don't always just be forcing stuff down the field, guys, okay? Uh, we went over the runs. I went over the play action. And now let's kind of get into the other stuff that I've been working on, okay? Um, one of the plays that I like as a base here is going to be the score verts. Now, if you have a tight end with, you know, the route ability from the tight end position, it helps. If you don't, you're going to have to improvise a little bit, okay? Um, I'm going to kind of just do this versus, like, what is supposed to be used against. Like, usually if you two see two high safeties, this is how you're going to run it, okay? Remember what I say, don't run stock plays, okay? If you run everything stock, you got everything going to the same part on the field, all those deep zones are just going to gravitate to the ball and, and everything's going to be magnetized to the same spot on the field. You don't want that. Everything that I do offensively needs to be with the concept in mind. Everything needs to be spaced and spread apart. Remember, when people call defenses, you, more often than not, everything's symmetric. So you want to make sure that your offense is non-symmetric. Okay, you don't want everything going to the same spot on the field, downfield, or nothing like that. You need to be able to attack the different levels, different spots on both sides of the field based off what you see pre-snap and post-snap. Okay, so one of the things that I'm going to do right here, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and give, give me the smart routed out route by Waller. Check, you can go flat or you can go check release route with the tight end over there. That's going to be a simple smash concept that we got over there to attack cover two. And it's also going to pull that safety away from the middle of the field. So you have more room to go downfield. So the next thing we need to do for that route by uh, Renfro to become a problem, we need, to, we need to go ahead and smart route it. So he runs at the safety before he cuts. And that's going to give us more room to throw it to the right side with a pass lead. Um, I would use a faster receiver there if, you know, you, you're playing you're playing someone that, that, that uses like cover two man or something. You would probably want a faster receiver there instead of a better route runner. Um, other than that, like, like I said, do make sure that your ID is on the line. And then you just kind of make your reads as they open. And as you can see right there, the corner route was open. But practice mode pass accuracy is a uh, thing of lack. Let me put my faster receiver right there real quick so everything runs like it's supposed to run instead of the glitchy ways of the, <laughs> the pass rush defense affecting your throws. All right, so let's try it again. All right, so smart route. You can go ahead and smart route that. I can do check release flat or I can go straight flat. It doesn't matter. And then we can just kind of read everything. That route by the running back can definitely hurt some people because there's another play that I'm going to go over next where that running back does the same thing. So you can definitely scheme around it between the two. Go ahead and smart route that. Do the flat. I'm just kind of read, see the running back's going to check. He's a solid check. You'll get like eight, eight yards off of that unless, you know, they're, they're going to actually user it or something like that. It's just something that you guys might want to kind of take advantage of. Pretty, pretty simple. Usually the play doesn't look, look at the, see how we got clear over that other safety? That's what I was telling you what that corner route does by that tight end. If you get your faster receiver, it's going to give you plenty of room to pass lead to the right without having to worry about that other safety interfering with um, you getting the ball deep. So it's pretty much just all you got to do. You can also read that, that route by Renfro over there. Pretty solid play. Okay, so there's different things that you can do in here and you don't necessarily just have to be just like that. Let's say you want to attack the middle of the field with the tight end. So we'll smart route the tight end. And then what we're going to do right here up the middle of the field, we can run a curl, or if I feel like I'm being pressed, 
I can run a hitch, smart route in the hitch, because you cannot play press coverage on hitch, hitch routes. Okay, so that, that would be the other thing. The last thing we want to do is we want to make sure that that safety is paying close attention to what we're doing over here. Um, the last thing that we want to make sure that we got on the field, I can either opt to smart route that route by Moreau, because like I said, y'all want to make sure you're attacking different levels of the field, okay? You don't want everything going deep, because then you ain't going to have nothing to check down to when, when, when the time is right. So, like I said, I got both safeties split. Let's see what they do. See, we had the running back open, and we had the, uh, the other thing. I was thinking that that route by Waller was going to be our go-to, but I guess not. So we got the hitch, smart route to hitch, and then we can just read it. See what happens downfield. Running backs open, we'll take the running back. It'll be a lot of check downs, and you know, like I said, when you're playing a user and they get tired of it eventually, their user's gonna come down and something's gonna happen downfield, I guarantee you. Um, practice mode, like I said, it's a little bit different than what you'll get in a game, but it's a lot more rewarding. Um, other than that, I think there's some other things you can do. Um, let's say, let me see how I want to do this, because there, there's a similar concept, like I can run the hitch route, and I can run a post route, then I can run my block release flat, and then I can motion him over to attack, you know, that coverage safety up the middle, you know, so I could do stuff like that to definitely get a read advantage and see how you just, good route running, he can get off that scene pretty good. Um, and like I said, you'll probably have different results in a game with it. Sometimes you'll have to play with it and see what it works with, works with depending on the speed of the, of the receiver and the route running of the receiver. It's just certain things that you can do to kind of create space. Um, other than that, um, you could probably swap your tight ends, like if they're playing aggressive man, you could probably swap your tight ends and then let's say we had Waller running this route and they want to shade inside or something, you know, Waller could run a route like that and get open. You know, so like I'm, especially with my user catch tutorial, if y'all have watched that video, I mean, kind of, you, you would run something like this if you just want to floss on someone, right? If you want to show out. So let's kind of go back into it and show you. We'll probably do it against man coverage because that's what I like to do stuff like this on. I'm trying to tell people don't run man coverage on me. <laughs> All right, so obviously you'll need more time. You'll be dealing with like plus one blitzes. All right, you want to, he's not going to play press. What a bitch. Um, we'll attack that safety deep. That's fine. I, I want to get him in press coverage, but I don't see him doing that. But like I said, you get my user catch down pack. You get that tight end over there one on one. He's just going to have a field day. I would prefer that he would be playing press coverage, but it doesn't look like he is. But we should still be able to use our ability to catch the ball and get position with his size. A little difficult in practice mode, I, I understand, but let's we'll see if there's a cover one press. Let me see. If it's like cover one press, that's a touchdown. defenses? That was so. Uh, 
Alright, so the Chargers don't have a press defense. They got a buzz press. I could probably do it against like that. Let me see. I don't see a man press, and that's usually what you want to use it against. We'll try it against a buzz press. It's going to be a little bit different throwing it on a zone versus throwing it on man because you've got to get the, the right pass lead on it. Um, go ahead and do that. So the zone's going to be a little bit tighter, but we go with our user. So it's that you get enough practice with it, you can dominate with it. Okay. So like I said, it's just a little bit trickier versus zone coverage than it is versus man. Um, if you're worried about that seam route, you can always just run like a route at it, and make it play under or something. We play him deep right there. So we just get that one on one. Don't hit the R1 too early. So if you're going to make that throw, you need to make it count. Here, let, me, let me just run a flat route, see if that can hold him down. Three, two, one. Almost. But, you know, you get enough practice with it, it'll work. I don't, it's not going to give me a man. Usually, like I said, I, I want route like that versus man coverage, not zone, because you really got to be on your shit if you're going to throw that shit against zone. But, I mean, it's doable, but I was just kind of trying to demonstrate. Um, other play that y'all see me use a lot, obviously, is the halfback slip screen. You can use this almost against any defense. However, I would not suggest using it versus man blitzes, okay? Unless you got like a skate artist or something like that, you know, try not to be over eccentric on using it, okay? Um, use it mainly versus people that are playing dr like standard drop coverages or occasional like zone blitzes is okay, but as long as they're not in a man, straight man, cover zero blitz, you're good, okay? If they're in a cover blitz and you need an audible check out of it. Okay, um, other than that, like I said, get a good pass lead. You can bomb them over the top. Sometimes, usually in a game, if I'm playing regs or something, I'm, I'm throwing the crosser. I'm looking at the crosser first, and then I'll throw the screen. Uh, I will go to that post route if I see it open. It's not going to always be open. It's not always going to be the best route. Like I said, your two two priority routes is going to be that crosser by Renfro and the screen pass by um, your running back. Now, if they're playing situations where they're only rushing three, you don't even need to roll out. All you got to do is just make sure that the center guy is ID'd. If you're rolling out, you need to ID the guy on the edge. If you're rolling out with the intent to throw it to the running back, you need to ID the guy on the edge. If you're dealing with three-man rushes, you need to ID the interior stay in the pocket don't roll out okay that's just point of emphasis that i need to make clear to you guys so that you guys aren't spamming what you see me doing in regs all the time you know i i've had games where i couldn't roll out you know i they, they have it contained off on the edge and they were only rushing three you know and i was just having more success staying in the pocket than trying to sit sit out there and roll out right into the contain so just kind of keep that in mind read what you see and then you can come over here you can play make them up make sure your quarterback sets his feet unless you have abilities where they can throw it on the run or anything like that because if they don't have no good throw on the run don't try to throw that shit on the run okay so that's pretty much going to cover that um sometimes you might see me roll away from the bl blitz or contain and cut it back right to where the screen is and still throw the screen you know um, don't just be spam tendency where you're always doing the same thing every time. So like I might roll out over here and then come back over here and throw the screen like that. You know, just kind of improvise a little bit based off the situations. Okay. Um, sometimes I might even playmaker the screen up. You never know how people play defense. Some, some people might be different, you know, so always just kind of have that, that gut feeling of when you need it do the improvising a little bit. But other than that, it's a solid play. You're gonna get solid yards from it, you know, and you can't go wrong with it, okay? 
So let's kind of get into the other stuff. Another one that I've been having success with, kind of similar to the um, to the play action play, is this clown post. Okay, um, I like this when you're not running it stock. You run it stock, only one route's going to be open. You don't want that. Now, if you make adjustments, then you create separation. There's only one route that you need to change on this whole thing. Okay. And that's going to be your point receiver. You can put him in a um, deep fade. And usually if you're playing someone with aggressive user and they're trying to defensive assist, what's going to happen is they're going to get bumped into that route by Jackson and it's going to create what we call defensive holding. They will get flagged for it if they're too aggressive trying to defend it. Um, if you're playing someone that likes to use or lurk and strafe, What's going to happen is, you know, like let's say we run the hitch route. You know, you could run that hitch route. They try to they try to strafe on the hitch route. That double move is going to slow their user down because once you hit that strafe, you've basically given the AI permission to control your user. So that's usually what I do on defense. I try to avoid strafing until the ball's in the air or something like that. But you'll see a lot of people strafing too much too early before the ball's even thrown. And usually once you see that, that's when those double moves start to take off and get that separation. Like I said, that's just another thing that people aren't going to tell you that you should know. Um, other than that, uh, just kind of read the quicks. Obviously, like I said, in the same thing in the four verbs, that running back route, that check release route, it's deadly. Okay, They're playing man coverage on it. They're not going to be in man coverage anymore because he checks and releases. You know, usually that man coverage, if someone's assigned to him in man and he doesn't initially, like he blocks initially, that, that man assignment might be contained, you know, or QB spy or something like that. Or he might just blitz. You know, it just really depends um, on the scenario and the defense that they call, whether they flip it or not. Um, other than that, like I said, just, you're either going to run a deep fade or you're going to run a hitch route with, uh, with that point receiver. That's really all you have to worry about. Um, you could probably do some other stuff to be creative here. Like you could motion your tight end over and run a drag route. You know, if you want to get a nice little smash concept over there to Waller. The advantage of running this is that that, that tight end, Waller, instead of him having his hand in the dirt, now he's got his foot in the dirt, so he'll have better acceleration off the line. So that's an advantage of making that motion adjustment if you choose to do so. Um, and as you see, that drag gets fairly open pretty quick if you want to do that. Um, or you can run that route with Waller. It doesn't matter. Um, other than that, that's pretty much going to be your clown post. I'm not going to be able to get that triple move by Jackson, I'm not going to be able to throw that in practice mode. Regardless how hard I try, I'm, and regardless what lineman I have, I do not have a full elite lineman. So as you can see, my bars, I've got good blocker resistance between the center left guard and left tackle, but my right side, I do not have any blocker resistance at all. You know, So I'm not going to be able to make those reads in practice mode and it's not going to be open in practice mode because I'm going to get pressure but in a game trust me it works okay you're just not going to get that off in practice mode to see the results um, get off into the next play I think the last one I mean you can run stick like spacing it's solid I shouldn't have to go into depth on how to run stick concepts um, I think the last, I mean, those are the last two is stick and smash. Uh, smash, pretty much the only thing that I'm doing, I'm not using it as an audible anymore. I mean, you've got that concept that you want on that side of the field. Um, what I would do, though, is I would run it flipped if you are using a right-hand quarterback. Um, because it's, it's just, it's so much better when you run it flipped for some odd reason. Um, what you're basically going to be looking for, the way I run this, is sometimes I might use a motion hike, right? 
with there by Renfro and that route will get open like real quick underneath. Okay, so if you have a good route runner, you can pick them apart underneath with that a few times, they'll have to respect it. Like you could do it on both sides. I just prefer to run it flipped because it's a little bit more effective. See, it gets kind of pressed and jammed up running it that way. But if I run it flipped, for some odd reason, you get, well, maybe it might be a left hash, right hash thing, because I'm on the left hash, I'm gonna run it flipped. You want your receivers on the wide side. So we'll do it like this, and then we'll change the field position. Then he just runs a little dart route right there across the middle of the field. So let's try the other side of the field. Let me change the spot of the ball. Because practice mode is very lenient on where the ball placement is for things to work the way you want them to. So if I run it from the right hash, do the motion, I should be able to get the same read right there. Okay, so that's pretty much all you're really looking for in the smash primarily. Um, you can, if you want, you can do some other stuff like sometimes I'll, I'll motion him out over here and test the, the depth of the cornerback. You know, if he's playing back too far, if he's shading over the top and nothing's playing to the flat, usually that route's going to be open. And if they don't cut for that route, they're going to give that corner post. And like I said, if you're running it from the regular side, your number one receiver needs to be fast. So Renfro is not fast. That's another reason why I said I run it flip because it flips your receivers, gives you that faster receiver to run that post, which is ultimately what you want because so you can get over the top of people with a faster receiver with that. Um, other than that, like I said, you still have the stick concept. It's just spacing. Um, usually you can use it against people that run a lot of zones. I wouldn't use it against man coverage because sometimes it bugs out a little bit where the stick routes don't run the stick, they, they run flat routes. Okay, then you have two receivers in flat and you're going to be like, well, fuck, you know? <laughs> so, um, kind of get a demonstration. It's going to be spacing concept, pretty much. You're going to read, read, read. Easy. That's all it is. Um, you can you can throw it in the mix of everything you're doing. Don't spam your plays, guys. Don't run things back to back, over and over, all over again. You know, and then people, you're going to give people room to adjust. So you just drop back, find which route opens. It's going to be the curl route. Sometimes your receiver might be open. Sometimes your running back is going to be open. Sometimes your primary is going to be open. Usually the primary gets cut off versus a specific coverage, because I'm on the right hash, that tight end's getting open. So if I go right, left hash, your open targets usually change based off of where you're, based on the coverage that you're facing and where you're spot on the field. So we go hash over here. Now this receiver gets open. So whichever hash you're closest to, closest to versus the zone coverage, is going to be the side that's going to get the ball. Okay, so we're on left hash, left receiver. If we're on right hash, the tight ends, or if you might decide to flip the play or something like that. So that's just pretty much all you're doing in the stick concept. Other than that, I think that's going to cover the, the full base formations that I use on offense. I hope that this helps you guys. I'm going to try to play some games. I'm glad that I got that, that off my chest for you guys. Um, so that you guys kind of have in-depth analysis of what you need to be looking for as far as, you know, what I do on offense. Um, other than that, since, you know, I haven't got blue screen yet, you know, knock on wood, uh, I'm going to try to play some games here and demonstrate them in live gameplay. And again, like I said, I hope this helps. If, if y'all feel the need you know, you can ask my cash out or whatever. Like I said, I don't get paid by YouTube, you know, and I try to break down these plays the best I can without it being, you know, cheesy or irrelevant to real football concepts that would eventually get patched if, 
you know, is broken enough. You know, my stuff is not going to get patched, guys. Anything I teach you is going to work throughout the entire year. You're not going to have to worry about anything getting patched, changing this, that, and re-updating or anything like that. If I do any updates, it might be what I might be doing schematically. But other than that, everything's pretty much straightforward. But like I said, I put my cash out in the chat. Anything helps. It's much appreciated. It can help me get a new hard drive <laughs> so that I ain't got to keep deleting the game and reinstalling it. You know, anything helps these days, right? But let's try to get a game in. Hopefully I don't get blue screen. Let's cross my fingers. But I'm glad I got, I was able to get what I wanted to get off my chest the first half of the video. So you got a game, let's try to keep it interesting. I'll try to break down some defense for you, for you guys too. Try to give y'all guys as much help going into Madden 23 as possible. So you guys got a head start against the competition. Y'all can be top 100 too, just like your boy. based off of opponent tendencies first and foremost. And then we'll make adjustments as necessary. Yeah, we kept a route over there just for that. certain adjustments but we should be okay I'll just try to simplify Let's run with Metcalf best we can good shit Changes pursuit, get the click off so he makes the correct tackle. Stop these sticks, bro. Why? I can't stop. You do your thing, man. I got blue screen. Fuck. <laughs> 